Hey there, are you planning a trip to Waco, Texas anytime soon? I finally made it to Magnolia and it did not disappoint. I'm excited to share the whole trip with you, plus a few other things to do in Waco while you're there. All right, so we were traveling from Missouri. So we flew to Dallas, Texas first actually, and I used it as a work trip because I needed to attend market for my clothing business anyway. So it was nice to be able to do that. And then we rented a car using Turo, which I've described to my friends like the Airbnb of car rentals. It went really smoothly. I loved the process. So I would highly recommend using the Turo app. This is not sponsored in any way, but I'll link it below if you're curious or traveling anytime soon. And then we rented an Airbnb tiny container home, which was seriously one of the highlights of the, the getaway. It was out in the country, so not too far from town, but gave us that like comfortable outdoorsy country living that we love, even, a, even when we're away from home. And it was just such a cozy little getaway. I will definitely link this one as well, but we loved the little container homes and they had like a whole village of them. They were so cute. The entire trip has been so inspirational for myself and my husband. We're very crafty people, and if you listened to the actual audio of these videos instead of a voiceover, you would probably hear me every five seconds telling him, you could build that, we could do this, and like planning all the things out. I'm sure he was like totally tired of me by the end of the trip, but you know, the creative juices were flowing and it was just such a fun trip. rooftop sitting the um coffee in the morning on the rooftop and then a happy hour in the evening was icing on the cake it was so relaxing to sit up there at our airbnb so we took our rent a car to town it only took about maybe i'd say less than 10 minutes to drive through town we parked behind the findery which is another really cute um shop just yeah. right off of the corner of magnolia and then of course we had to start with coffee because who wouldn't go to the coffee shop first <laughs> we we didn't rush around to get there but we we got there maybe around 9 a.m that morning and um, this was the first place we started and then it also connects to magnolia home so we just started exploring right away and i just am in love with all the interior design so i was just you know happy to sit in there and look at all the things and finally getting a coffee at Magnolia Press. You have to wait for it. I have a giggle here. It's hilarious. <laughs> okay, you can barely hear it on video, but it made me laugh because I was obviously was really giddy about my coffee. <laughs> it's so exciting. So anyway, if you love Magnolia as much as I do, you're gonna love their home store. It was very inspiring with all the spring things out and about. I wish I could buy it all, but I just loved looking at the layout and the things they put together. Um, those architectural pieces and found items that they blended in with the new and I just it's just so inspiration so inspiring to me and gave me so much inspiration I had to admire how every square inch of the entire property was so well thought out and planned down to the scent in the room and the music playing in the background from a designing standpoint, I just, I don't know, I came to appreciate every single detail in the entire property. So we liked the idea of attending Magnolia through the week, thinking that maybe it wouldn't be quite as crowded. And we were definitely right. We went on Wednesday, which one of the people that worked there told us that Wednesdays are usually generally quiet. So that was definitely our experience. It did pick up in the afternoon and it was a little bit busier, but for the most part, we felt like we had the entire place to ourselves when we first got there in the morning. It was nice and quiet and we were able to pop into all these little shops um, and they weren't too crowded. So it was really nice. We felt like we had the whole place to ourselves. My little entrepreneur heart was so jealous of Joanna in this moment because of all these little shops. I told him, I was like, Joanna at this point has had an opportunity to open every kind of store you could possibly think of, you know, or dream up. There's the paper store, there was like a spa store, a men's store, a boutique, um, the bakery at this point. I mean, there's so many different things that she's had her hand in and I just love how they branded each one of these little shops and they were all very inspiring and had their own little brand within the walls. It was so, so inspiring to see all of these.
The architecture in the old church was also really beautiful. Just, it's hard to see it all on video here, but there was just so many details um, in all of the woodwork. It was just a really stunning building to walk into. Like I said, we were visiting in about the end of March, so it was warm and spring was in the air, and it was definitely inspiring to see all of the garden things. My husband, that was probably his favorite part, he's inspired now to build a greenhouse, which I am all for. I'll have to share that with you as we embark on that project before too long. But uh, he just loved looking at that, all those buildings, the greenhouses, all the flowers coming up, and it got us really excited for spring. So I feel like we may have done this backwards, but it worked out great. We started our entire tour of the grounds at the coffee shop and then worked our way through the smaller shops and then finally ending up in Magnolia Market, which seems to be the main attraction. That's where the main entrance is to the grounds, but I really liked the way that we did our own tour. It seemed like it worked out fine. Um, but in Magnolia Market, of course, you get all of the favorites here. I loved the kitchen area. I wanted to buy all of the things. I have a black and white kitchen, so everything was very inspiring to me. Um, and I didn't realize there was this big back room on Magnolia Market um, that housed a lot of their home goods and t-shirts and things, and I'm sure some outlet, you know, warehouse things as well. So that was a fun little area. I loved just the, the details, and I was so inspired just kind of taking every piece apart and being inspired to go back home and decorate my home for spring. I must have been so ready for food because I did not get any footage of the food trucks. We were too busy deciding what to have for lunch because everything sounded so good. They had barbecue. I of course got the pizza. Dan had the best hamburger. It was so juicy, so good. The And really the lines weren't bad. The only line we had to stand in was to get into the bakery after lunch. We were at the bakery around 1 p.m. and I guess everybody was in the mood for cupcakes. So we did have to stand in line maybe 10 to 15 minutes. So again, on a Wednesday, this worked out great. We hardly had to battle any kind of lines. We could sit down almost anywhere we wanted to while we were there and um, it was did not disappoint whatsoever. I had a strawberry buttercream cupcake and it was so good and then I had to get a blueberry muffin because for some reason those had been on my mind so I got those two things. <laughs> Dan made fun of me while I was trying to eat for the camera but <laughs> there's no good way to do it but it was delicious. Dan had a chocolate cookie and a Dr. Pepper in a glass bottle like the original. So if you're also in Waco, we didn't have time to do it while we were there, but they do have the Dr. Pepper factory and museum. So definitely check that out if you're in Waco for more than one day. This was kind of a quick trip for us. I also stopped by Maggie's Sweet Shop. Yes, I had a lot of sugar while I was there. I ended up keeping this for breakfast the next morning because it was basically like a homemade Pop-Tart. And it was brown sugar on the inside. I'm gonna have to recreate these at home because they are so good. But it was just like a pastry, like a pie crust, and then like a brown sugar concoction in the middle. So stinking good. Anyway, goodbye Magnolia Market. I will miss you. We left the grounds around 2, 2.30, and we went to see the little shop on Bosky. And this part was so inspiring to me. I'm a small business owner, and this was just really enlightening to visit to visit her original shop where it all started and so it was really fun to walk in there and just envision like a young Joanna Gaines running the counter and this is where they had a lot of their markdowns so that was a really fun place to shop and I got some really good deals on their outside sale. 
Okay, so our Airbnb also suggested we visit the Homestead Craft Village, which is an Amish community that is full of wonder. I love old barns, like obsessively love old barns. So if you love old barns and cabinet, cabins, you need to go see this stuff. Or if you're interested at all in homesteading or the, you know, just old fashioned ways, definitely take the time to visit this place while you're in Waco, Texas. So you can go, they have a restaurant, um, which I heard is really good for breakfast and for lunch but they were closed unfortunately by the time we got there um, we really liked the grist mill it was so cool they had the water wheel outside actually grinding flour they said that a lot of the flour that they make there actually goes to local restaurants and of course it also is sold in their general store that was there um, along with where you just saw me working in or shopping through their little shop along in the barn but it was so cool and we got to see how it worked and they you know talked they they walked us through how everything works. Oh, yeah. so it's really see the grain is just trickling down. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just a few few berries at a time. Gonna stay in this moment. Gonna lay here on the grass. I felt like one really neat thing about the Homestead Craft Village is that you could take lessons while you were there. You could sign up. I, don't, I mean, for the local people, I think this would be really neat because you could take classes in the woodworking shop, in the pottery shop. There was basket making. They had a little shop for each trade. And everyone was so friendly and outgoing. It was really fun visiting with all of the men and women that worked there. Um, and of course, the craftsmanship and just, I was in wonder just kind of, admiring the beauty of everything that was handmade of all the magic places in the world I've been to this is where my heart is oh you know it's true no matter a lot of the buildings were actually from other places and they had taken them down and reconstructed them on the property so this cabin actually came from Missouri and being Missouri natives we thought that was really cool and had to check out the exterior while we were there every barn and building was just really unique and I wanted to share a little footage of each one this was the woodworking shop but I also have footage of the pottery shop coming up and there there's a barn that was more of a general store where they came together and sold all of their crafts from the village in one local gift shop and then there was also a quilt barn there was just so many places to see um, it, during this trip and I would highly recommend swinging by the homestead craft village I almost forgot we also got to walk down and visit the cheese cave which just blew my mind how many wheels of cheese are underground it was so cool and um, it's definitely just something to see that's out of the out of the usual for us and we finished our evening off with some margaritas at Torchy's Tacos, which was highly recommended by several people that had stayed at the Airbnb and the locals. Um, if you want to get up to the counter, ask for the secret menu, because apparently there's some extra tacos that aren't on the menu. So if you want to feel like a local, do that. The margaritas were pretty good, and the tacos were also good as well, but the queso may have been my favorite, because look at that. Lots of cheese at Torchy's Tacos, and it was very good. Nice little nightcap to the evening. And that pretty much wraps up our day trip in Waco, Texas. I hope you found this inspiring, and I hope that you have the opportunity to visit Waco soon. Let me know what you're most looking forward to in the comments down below. And if you have any questions or anything you would like to know, let me know. I'd love to help you out and give you some suggestions. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for all things country living. I'll be back next week with a new video for you. We'll see you again soon. This is where my heart is Oh, you know it's true No matter where I go I'm coming home to you